Hello everyone, welcome to Life Questions. I'm Jennifer Beck sitting in this week for Bill Harris. We are excited about today's show and we're so happy to have you joining us. Also joining us is a great group of pastors and I'd like to welcome them today. We have Pastor Jeff Kimberly from Neapolis Church of Christ, way up north from our direction. We have Pastor Neil Whitney from the church at Allentown, just down the road from the TV station in the village of Allentown. Coming from New Bremen and Cutlersville, it's Pastor Ed Reinhardt from St. <laughs> Peter's and Emmanuel UCC churches. And finally, Pastor Michael Wyckoff. Joy Harvest Fellowship in Lima, over on the east side of Lima, actually. All right, let's get started with our first topic. Welcome, gentlemen, by the way. I like your enthusiasm. Thank you. Appreciate your willingness and excitement for us to get going. And we are going to get going with a topic that surrounds the COVID pandemic that we've dealt with. And it's a word that people don't really like to hear about, and it's the word lockdown. Now, we have had other... Uh, we've had many people actually comment, and maybe you've heard it too, I can't handle another shutdown. Someone actually wrote into us and said that very thing. Every time I hear our governor mention the possibility of it, I feel my mind is going crazy. I need help to get through this. All right, men, this mm -hmm. person needs help. So what can we do to help this individual today? Doesn't we even want to think about the possibility of any sort of shutdown? Everybody's looking at me, so I guess well, she that, looked at me. So I mean, it's, it's, okay. I just passed to the plate. That's your okay. Turn. Well, you know, there's there's two aspects to this. I think you know, no one likes to be imprisoned, right? Mm -hmm. And I certainly don't like to be too. Uh, but you know, I think some people need to. Uh, I, I actually, all of us, I think, at some point, need solitude. Need to get into the habit of being alone with the Lord. You know, I'm talking now about Christians, okay? Because, you know, there's unbelievers, uh, there are Christians, I'm sure, watching this show. And uh, to be honest with you, I was basically telling my folks, look, you know what? S take advantage of this time to get into the Word some more. Take advantage of this time to pray some more, you know? Well, I, you know, I don't have time to pray. Well, now you do. And so there's one advantage there anyway. Now, you can only go so far with that, but I think we should start with the positive on that. Um, I'm sure in our discussion, we're gonna get into, um, you know, why should we be? Uh, is this tyranny? You know, why do we have to not, you know, why, why can't we have church and so forth? And those are very real, and I'm sure we're gonna hear some more opinions, but I just thought I'd throw that part out. Um, you know, solitude and forcing to be by yourself, okay, fine, use it and take advantage of it for your spiritual growth. Now, like I said, there's some downsides, and I'm sure we'll get into that. But. Michael, you, you, I hate to jump in here, but you might like being locked down. I don't. I am not <laughs> a lockdown type person. I am right there with this person. I have animals. I have, I have a stable of seven horses. I have chickens. <laughs> I, have, I have things to do. You, you, no, there, no, you cannot lock me down. I have to go to the feed store. I mean, this is weekly, <laughs> daily stuff. This, my life does not stop because a governor says, you can't go out anymore. No, it, that doesn't right. happen. So... Um, and then I'm a minister on top of that. So there's people out there that uh, I, lockdown isn't possible. And so I, I, that's why I, I, I'm with this person going, I don't know if I could go through another one. Um, I don't see a lockdown. I don't see how you lock down. I, I didn't um, make it through the first one. I, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I was I was on the road and, and, and traveling the same day that they said stay home. Yeah. So. I was figuring out, was I riding a horse back and forth at midnight? We went and got stuff and supplies and put it at the barn so I could stay at the barn. And, and, and I didn't have heat at the barn yet. And I'm like, am I sleeping with the horse tonight or with you, honey? Hold on. That, did I say that on air? <laughs> He's married. He's talking about his wife. So we don't have to worry about that. But let me give you a little context behind who actually sent this in. We're talking about a, a mother. This is a wife. Mm. I think she's in her late 20s, maybe early 30s. Little kids at home. Mm -hmm. Um very active, I would not say a real yeah. social person, but really voiced that another lockdown mentally mm -hmm. yeah. was going to be really difficult. I, I, I can speak for my wife and for us. We have three small children at home. It was hard for us to be in the house by ourselves for, you know, this amount of time, the first time, you know, and, you know, we, you know, you need groceries, you need, you need that social interaction. Yeah. And you couldn't do it. I mean, yeah. my kids craved just going to the grocery store. Yeah. 
you know, I'd get ready to go to the grocery store. They go, Daddy, let me go to the grocery store with you. I'm sorry, buddy, you can't go with me. Mm-hmm. And, and, and my wife is, you know, and then you've got to throw school on top of that. You know, you're doing virtual school. You know, you're telling people who, you know, I haven't been in school in 18 years, hey, go be a teacher. Uh, yet, I don't know what you're talking about. Honey, I can't help so you with that. There are a lot of pressures. Very lot much. Lot pressures. And I, so I understand what this lady's saying, you know, what this person is saying with, I can't handle another one, you know. So let's, I, as I think about this, and I think, were you about to say something, Neil? Go ahead. Do you two, want to? Two, two big words for me out of this whole concept <laughs> has been respect and compassion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I need to respect what other people are thinking, and I need to have compassion for where they are in their situation. Yeah. And uh, I don't see enough of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For, for this individual and, and, and a number of others, on the last, right at the end of, of April, before we had the extended lockdown, or, and they were trying to, whether it's safe, stay safe, or whatever they wanted to change the terms, I had three individuals in 24 hours contact me about potential suicide. And I contacted individuals and said, hey, we got to get help. We gotta. Mm-hmm. So the, the issue is real. Um, the mental health that goes along with this, the mental, the mentalness of being in lockdown, the distress that was on individuals. So, so here's the key. You have to find a place that you can connect. And for individuals that are more or, or less social than others, you, that's more difficult. So if you know an individual in your family is less social, you need to take responsibility to be that connection. Point. That's a very good point. So you have, you have to, I know an individual that his spouse was sick and, and, and he, he said, I'm, I'm not going to be back to church. I, I'm going to stay, take care of my wife. I, she's at risk. I, it, I've called him two, three times a week mm. since this started. Yeah. And, and you have to, we have to take on responsibility for those individuals. A mom with children at home, one-on-one. We need, someone needs to be speaking into her life. Someone needs to be speaking into her, giving, letting her know that she's all right, finding how she's handling, giving her that moment time where she can vent and, and, and cope and, and deal with and express what's going on. And, and those, that's a key element. So if you know an individual out there that is, has that is isolated themselves, contact them, call them, talk to them, be with them, help them, nurture them. We did CPR, call, pray, report. So call, call the person, pray with them, report to somebody else, hey, this is what's going on. So there's a chain of command. There's a, there's a body of believers. If, if the person's not a Christian, guess what we as Christians are supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be helping them in this process. So I, 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 for the person, don't want to hear the word lockdown, for the person that's locked in with children and doing the homeschool, which was difficult, etc., we, we as other individuals recognize loving thy neighbor, as thyself, how would I want someone to respond to me? Mm-hmm. And so that, that's where we need to really be in really helping these individuals and then dealing with that mental health. We opened the churches right back up. Um, matter of fact, the next couple of weeks I met with the elders and we were back open because at that point we had to because the mental health of so many, it was more concerning for the mental health than the, than the, than the virus itself at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'd hit that break point. One of the things that I, I think resonates with me in this statement, um, saying I cannot handle another shutdown, this woman didn't say this because a shutdown had happened. The woman was saying this because the idea yeah. of mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. permeating her mind. Mm-hmm. So now we've got another issue that I've seen rise up through all the things that people have gone through. It's, I mean, we talk about post-traumatic stress disorder. Maybe mm-hmm. she's got some PTSD issues. Mm-hmm. But she, she needs encouragement. Mm-hmm. She needs to be reminded that even if we are shut down, God is not shutting himself mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. From, mm-hmm. from her. Yeah. Um, and that's... Yeah, yeah so, so I'm in this series right now at our church. Um, it's called, I'm calling it It's Time. And, and so Sunday I'm talking about it's time to give it to God. Just give your anxiety, give your stress, your worry, give it to God. You know, he, and then I talk about you have to give yourself to God, too. You know, Hebrews chapter, I think it's chapter 13, where it says, or maybe it's chapter 3, uh, encourage one another daily as long as it's called today. What are you doing to encourage somebody else? Mm-hmm. You, you're giving, you've got to give yourself to God and let Him use you as a vessel to encourage other people. And so I've said to our elders, guys, you need to be calling folks. 
you need to go through your shepherding list and call and, and just quick, how you doing? You know, we have a card ministry at our church, so we send cards to, we take and send, have a lady that sends cards. So we send cards to people. We have a lady that hasn't come out of her house since this whole thing happened. So March, she hasn't come out of her house. And she lives right around the corner from, from me. And so I've gone to her house, knocked on her door, and she will come to the door and she'll stand and I'll just wave at her and I'll say, are you doing okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Okay, good. If you need anything, here, you know, you have my phone number. And that's all it is. But it's that encouragement. It's that intentionality of showing them, hey, we care about you. And that's what is needed right now. That's that intentionality is needed from the church to people who, who feel this way. Yeah. We're not made for isolation. No. Mm-hmm. no. We were made for community. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, it's great to have more time with God, but... <laughs> Not just that. That's that's prison. Um, Scripture: Be still and know that I am God. Yeah. That's that solitude yeah. moment. Chill. It, 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 just take a relax. Chill, relax. Chill, Pastor. You touched me. Hold on. Hold on. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we can have fun, people. We gotta laugh. That that's one of the things we're lacking, is is the laughter, and we've gotta have we've gotta we've gotta be able to do that. We've gotta have the fun. We've gotta we've gotta encourage one another. We've gotta do uh, another passage. I think of is Isaiah forty one ten. Um, I think of Psalm 121. Uh, I left my eyes under the hills. Where does my help come from? Where does your help come from? And for the individuals out there, where does your help come from? Where are you, where are you reaching out to? And maybe you're not in a body of believers. Maybe you don't have a church connection. Maybe, maybe online church and maybe TV church is all you have and there is no connection to, a, to someone come knock on your door. Call somebody. Yeah. Reach out. Let them know. Hey, I need, I need, and ask God, God, who is it? God will end up showing up so, somebody to your door, yeah. knocking on your door, getting a letter, etc. I mean, it, it, it's amazing what God can do when we let him have his opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah, we really promote fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher mm-hmm. of your faith. Mm-hmm. So if you're a Christian, you're born again, you accept Christ as Savior, might be time to work a little harder at making him your Lord mm-hmm. by fixing your eyes on him. And uh, yeah, that's a great point. Really that's a great point, Neil, because I think maybe the shutdown has caused people to take their eyes off of God. Yeah. You know, we've, we've gone to, oh, well, we, ha- we have to listen to what the governor says. And we've we got to make sure that, you know, I'm keeping my mask on and I've got to make sure I've got my mask with me. I've got to make sure I keep my distance. And so we're worried about all these other things. And, and because of that, our focus has shifted from God. And so God is now blurry off in the distance. And that's, that's not what it says, you know. That's Hebrews chapter 12. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. Well. You sure doesn't keep your eyes on the news? No, it's not. Keep, keep your eyes, your on, the eyes on the Twitter. No. Or keep your eyes on the Facebook. That's the thing is we're, we're you make a, that's another great point is we are so fixed on the news. I haven't watched the news in months and and it, I think it changes your perspective when you're not listening to the talking heads, as I like to call them, um, because... I'm sorry, Jennifer. He's talking about you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Gosh, no. But when, when you're just... When you're taking that time to f- keep your focus where it needs to go as Christians on Jesus, and, and for us as Christians on our non-Christian friends to help them, to point them to Jesus. You know, that's... You know, Paul tells... In the Bible, uh, I have one job, and that is to know Christ and to make him known. Well, how are you doing at that? For, you know, to your non-Christian friends, keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't worry about what the news says. I mean, yes, you have to respect and pray for your leaders. The Bible tells us that. And you, so, yes, listen to the governor. But it's not an edict. It's suggestion. So keep your focus on God. That's where it needs to be. All right, we're going to continue our conversation in just a moment, taking a look at fear, which is not of God, but has been permeating throughout our past year. And how about the future of our country? That and more when we return on Life Questions.
don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. We are back and we're glad that you are with us as well. Remember, Life Questions is an interactive show. That means if you have a question, a topic idea, something you think our panel should be talking about, we encourage you to send that information to us at lifequestions at WTLW.com or you can just give us a call 419-339-4444 and perhaps your question will appear on a future episode. Well, on this episode, so far we've been talking about shut down. What does that word do to your mind and your emotions when you think about what that is? Does it cause any fear into your mind? So let's shift our discussion to talk about fear. You know, there's wisdom and there's fear. And sometimes you can blur the lines between which is which, but God wants us to be wise, but he doesn't want us to be fearful. But it can be difficult to fight the idea of fear, especially with all the things that we have encountered. How should we combat that? What should we do? We always say that fear is an acronym for false evidence appearing real. So we have to know what real is. And then we have to watch for the evidence that is not real, counterfeit, phony, whatever it might be. So I would go back to fixing your eyes on Jesus and trying to look at everything through the eyes of Christ we have that capability of looking at everything through the eyes of Christ. And we just have to have wisdom as we watch. That's right. Mm -hmm. Does that also go in with the uh, scripture passage that tells us to take every thought captive? Hmm. Because we're a very emotional society. And I think we become even more emotional. <laughs> You're looking at me like, what are you talking about? Emotional? <laughs> we don't get emotional. We are calm. We are cool. We only get angry. Wow. We emotionally <laughs> outburst with our anger. But you know, so let's say I have a fearful thought come to my mind and I could react instantly to that, which is typically how we do it. The fear mm -hmm. comes to my mind and we react. But what you're saying, Neil, is if we're going to stop and fix our eyes on Jesus, then we need to stop and keep that thought from turning into something that allows the enemy to let fear take root. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? What do you do? To get angry? Yeah. Pray. Pray. It helps yeah. to know the word. Yeah. Right. When Jesus was tempted by the devil, he just responded with the word. Mm -hmm. And when fear comes, I've always heard when fear knocks on your door, send Jesus to the door. Don't go yourself. And we do that by using the word. There's power in the word. Oh, my goodness. Just quoting it, yeah. saying the word. Just say the name Jesus. If you don't think there's power in the word of Jesus, just say it in a non-Christian setting and uh, <laughs> people hear it. I, I'm, I'm thinking of non-believers that are out in the world that are, that are, that are full of fear. And they're, they're, they're fe their fear is, is one response, anger is the other. I, I think of a, a slippery slope. I think of a, a, a dome kind of thing. And, and when we're right with God, we're walking with God, we've got ours fixed on Jesus, we can sit on top of the mountain, we can walk, we can see, we, we have a good vista of, of what's real and what's, what, what's, what's true. But as we start to slide one side or the other, we either become more fearful or we become more angry. And, and we slide down that, that slope and we become more isolated and more, more inward or more outward in our approach to how we respond to the situation. So if you think of it as, as fear and anger are, are the same thing, only one is an internal response and one is an external response. And so my external response is someone's posts something on Facebook and my first response is da 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 and, and I'm right back at it and I'm, I'm typing away and I'm, and, and I'm like, I'm like ready to call them on the phone kind of thing. Like, you don't, you know, what caused that? My blood sugar was low. Um, uh, what was that? I mean, what, ha what happened that caused my anger to go like that? Is it self-confidence? Is it confidence in God? Is it confidence in my situation? And many of us lost confidence in our situations. James says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. 
But I we failed. change we change that. We change it around. We're not quick to listen. We're slow to listen. We're quick to speak. We're quick to become angry. Amen. And and, and this this lockdown that we're in is amplifying it a thousand percent. I mean, the drop of the hat, you're angry. You're upset. You know, uh, somebody said, like you said, somebody said something on Facebook we don't agree with. Oh, let me just type out my response right now. And somewhere in that response, we've lost, we've lost our witness because anger is right there. Well, you got to stop. You got to think. And, and fear is the same thing. When, when you start to get fearful, stop. Pray. Respond. Like that's, and that's what people don't do is when fear <clears throat> creeps in, they just, they don't stop. And I think you, you hit it, Jennifer, with the, you quote the scripture, you know, casting down imaginations. You know, thoughts will come. And I think sometimes they're demonically, you know, induced or whatever. But, you know, you can't stop the birds from flying over your head, but you can stop them from making a nest in your hair. You know, thoughts will come. Anger may arise. But, you know, and Neil, I, th I think you, you hit on the word, you know, this is the time really to focus on the word of God because as a fleshly being, you know, I am, I am not conditioned naturally to respond the way in a, I, I should in a Christ-like manner. But the more we read the word and renew our minds according to the word, you know, after a while our, our reflexes become that of Jesus. We respond like Jesus, think like Jesus. And again, it gets down to the focus when we focus on the word of God, like you said, the word of God has, has the power. You know, the second thing, you know, we talk about what, what can they do? What, 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 what can you do out there? Well, one I think is, you know, focus more on the word, focus more in prayer. And the second thing is, you know, God has not given us a spirit of fear. What is it? Second Timothy 1, 7, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Um, and then the other thing that comes to mind is what James said in, I think, James 4.8, uh, resist the devil and he will flee. You know, and, you know, it's like, Satan, no, that is, I am not going to get in fear. I resist you because it is a spirit. It's a spirit. And it makes you focus on yourself. That's what fear is. You know, fear is really, um, it's faith, but it's faith on what's going to happen to you. And what are people going to think of me and I'm angry because of how I looked. I, I, me, me, you know. And when we keep our, our, our focus, you know, really on the Lord through his word, it goes a long way, but you got to resist the devil. You know, and, and you got fear, but you also have anxiety. Anxiety is just <clears throat> another form of fear. And people are anxious. Yeah. People out there are anxious, you know. What's going to happen tomorrow, you know? Uh, especially, you know, we're, we're, this is what, mid-January that we're taping this, and we've got so many things happening and, and everybody's fearful, everybody's anxious about it. And cast all your cares on Christ because he cares for you. There you go. So it sounds like I'm Nothing. hearing you all say, <laughs> be in the word of God. Yes. Get the scripture in your minds regularly. Um, I'd like to add in, have worship music going. I know personally in our house mm -hmm. that has great Im impact on us when Good. things are difficult Then you just have have that positive thing going as well. But as far as, as reading the Bible, you know, we're still near the beginning of the year. How, how does someone who isn't in that habit get themselves into that habit to be daily reading the Word of God? Well, one Where thing do they I, start? You know, what do they do? One thing I have is the, the, the one-year Bible. You know, it doesn't mean that... There's one thing is you don't want to get into a rut, you know, and you don't want to get into a religious... Um, you know, rut, if you will. Some people do. Um, well, I've got to read five chapters and I've got to do this. But uh, I think a good place to start is that one-year Bible. It takes 15 minutes. And one-year Bible is really a Bible that says, okay, January 1, here's part of the Old Testament, you know, two or three chapters. There's a Psalm. Here's the, uh, you know, a chapter from the New Testament and some Proverbs. And at the end of the year, you've gone through the Bible, right? That's a good place to start. Um, but I think a lot of folks... Uh, I don't know, I think whatever the Spirit of God is leading you to do, you know, sometimes something's on my mind. And you know what? Okay, I'm going to put that down. I'm going to go read scriptures on fear, let's say, you know, mm -hmm. on fighting fear and so forth. Um, but I think a good place to start is the one-year Bible. Just a random thought. Pastor Ed, looks like you want to get something to well, say. Well, I'm thinking of the non-Christian out there, though. Yeah. I'm thinking of the individual that says, I don't have a church. I don't have 
What, mm -hmm. How do I do this? I don't, I don't know how to start. I don't know, I, I don't have a Bible. I don't, well, you've got online resources, et cetera. But let me, let me if, if you're in, in fear, one of the things you need to do is decide, do you want to take control of your life? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be in control of or do you want the circumstances to control you? And if you want to control the direction, you need to make a decision, I want to do something positive. Yeah. And so what is the one positive thing you want to do today to, to make that change? That's the first step. So ma start making positive decisions. Maybe I want to call on a friend. Maybe I want to... We don't have to be Christians to be friendly and be neighborly. But, we, but that's, that's a start to overcome our own fear. Mm -hmm. So... Look at what you can do positive to be a, a positive influence, help, nurture one another and move forward. So start there. And begin taking control of your situation, your life, and, and, and those things. And the rest of it begins to happen. Then you ask and resource yeah. and go from there. Change your mindset. Exactly. Change your mindset. Look, you know, when you're fearful, what are you always looking for? The negative. You're always looking for the bad things because it... When you're fearful, the bad things let you, that fear t f put you further, like you said, in a rut. But it's that changing your mindset to positives. You know, how can I help my neighbor? How can I, how can I just be, what, how can I be happy today? What, mm -hmm. what can I look at in my life and say, this brings me joy? Mm -hmm. and, and focus on that. And, and, and yeah, there may be a lot of non-Christians who are watching and going, you know, I don't have a Bible. I don't have a church. I don't know where to start. Start by choosing joy every day. Start by choosing to be joyful and positive every day and just watch your life change. Anything else, friends? We're just about out of time. We got 90 seconds to go. I would just remind everybody about respect and compassion. It's just really easy to say things and We've spent a lot of time in the recovery world through AA and Celebrate Recovery. And you just have to respect people and you have to have compassion for them. If you don't do that, then you, you, can't, you can't go anywhere. Yeah. You have to meet people exactly where they are and understand and care about them. Love people, care for people. That's a formula for hope. And that's what people need is hope. When you're desperate, you need hope. Mm -hmm. You don't need a list of three things to do. <laughs> you need somebody that cares about you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's all the time we have for this show. These four incredible men will be back with us again next week for another round of life questions. But as we close, I just want to remind you a few things, some takeaways that we can take away from today. Number one, scripture. So important to have the word of God in your life. So if that is a regular part of your life, Keep that going. If it's not a regular part of your life, be willing to push yourself out of your comfort zone and go ahead and start with that. Reach out to others if you are struggling, but maybe even more if you know of others who you think are struggling, reach out to them. Make that phone call. Just check and see how they're doing or just have a conversation. Help them know that they are loved. And finally, be willing to change your mindset. Ask God to give you the tools to fight the enemy and focus into this new year with a positive, joyful focus. That's all for today. We'll see you next week. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>